Hello, everyone. We are back with the Jays Fit Down Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden. I'm here today with Nick Winkler, of course. Um, glad to have him back on the show. Been a minute, and we're going to be talking about, you know, just some NFL action today. Of course, we'll be discussing uh, the draft a little bit. Nick's going to give his uh, side of the 49ers. Want to talk about that and his, his opinion on how they did as far as the draft and everything. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about Devontae Adams, too. Um, he had an interesting comment that he <laughs> released the other day. So I'm excited to get your opinion on that, Nick. And then, can the Chiefs be the throne finally? So we'll get into that. But thank you guys for subscribing checking in please make sure you do that and nick thanks for coming on yeah my pleasure jay yes like i mentioned man um the draft has passed us uh now we're heading to off season no you know rookie mini camp everything so sitting back looking at it um you know what, what's your take on uh, san francisco how they did in the draft I mean, I think they did well considering, right? I mean, they had no first round draft pick. They had no second round draft pick. And the only third round draft picks they had were compensation, right? So they're the compensatory picks. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure that they addressed all their needs that they had coming into this, you know, and they, they went after safety, you know, they went after kicker, they went after middle linebacker. They, you know, they, they tried a couple of cornerback, wide receiver, you know, and outside linebacker, you know, things that, that were, they thought, in their opinion, the best available players at that time. So it's hard to argue that, especially when you've had a guy like Robbie Gold for so long, there's been so money, and you feel like, hey, we don't have a fourth round pick. Let's go get this kid Moody, who never missed an extra point, who's money from beyond 50 yards, you know, who played at a big time organization there in, in Michigan and really hit some clutch kicks for a long period of time. So we're going to fill this need. He's probably not going to be around in the fifth when we have our next pick. So, so you know, there was a lot of uproar from the 49er fans about taking a kicker in the third round, which you can understand that. But also remember that that wasn't exactly just they had three compensatory third round picks. Right. So to them, that was kind of like, a, let's give it a shot. You know, let, let's see if this kid can be something. Maybe we found our kicker for the next 10 years. Um, so all in all, I, with what they had. Going into the draft, pick wise, I think they did they did relatively well. They got some possible starters down the line. They got some maybe some impact impact players, and, and you, you know you never know obviously until these these young men hit the field. Uh, but the rookie camps, you know, they look good. I, I like what I saw. Uh, I like what I'm seeing so far. You know, out of out of a lot of these guys, you know, especially Jair Brown. I mean, I think he could he could uh, easily step in to to that safety role next to Hufanga uh, by the start of the season, or maybe even just midway through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as we're getting closer to, you know, offseason programs and everything and then eventually training camp in, this, you know, July, you know, June, July. So um, who are some, you know, players that you're, you know, hoping that, you know, they have a good camp and that you're looking forward to, you know, sticking out maybe, you know, to the coaching staff and, you know, making a name for themselves and hopefully, you know, just having a good impact season. Well, I think the biggest concern for me going into the season is, you know, the loss of D'Amico Riots, right? So can Wilkes jump in and be the man? Because you go from Robert Sala to Ryans, you know, that those are some big shoes to fill. Like that is a, that is a line that's been put there, you know, like, are you going to drop the line down? You're going to keep it going or are you going to rise it up? I mean, everything he's done so far, everything he said is perfect, right? He's saying all the right things. He's doing all the right things. And now you hope that he can get the most out of some of these young guys. I mean, Nick Bosa obviously is stuck. You know, I don't think he needs a big time coach to make him, you know, Fred Warner, same thing, you know, Drake Greenlaw. Like a lot of these guys are just studs. But you hope that he can be like, oh, Drake Jackson, here's what you didn't do in your rookie season. Here's how we make you a stud in year two. You're going to be opposite Nick Bosa. You're going to be getting all the single coverage you can handle, all those double teams. Everybody's going to be worried about the guy on the other side. What can you do with that? You know, a guy like Javon Kinlaw, maybe he can get the most out of him. He's been a huge flop. I mean, a lot of that's due to injury. But maybe Wilkes can figure out, hey, buddy, you know, you need to work on this. And, and really, you know, we're going to limit how much we put you out there to really limit your exposure to try and let you play a full season. You know, you got a guy like Sammy Womack, who is expected by many to step step into that uh, slot cornerback role there on defense as well. You know, Diamond Lenore, he turned it on at the end of the season, looked great in the postseason, you know? So is, are they going to have a great secondary? Because I, I, a lot of what I'm reading is like, oh, their secondary is where they're going to get hurt the most. But it's like, I, I'm not fully sure on that. I'm not sold on that just yet. But I, to me, the number one thing that I'm looking at all off season long is just the defense as a whole and how it reacts under Wilkes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, it's hard, like you said, to live up to those big names, Salah. 
uh, D'Amico Ryan's two amazing coaches, amazing guys, you know, mm-hmm. you, know to, you know, and player, players love to be around them. You know, they spoke highly of them, both of them all the time. So much respect there. So now Steve Wilkes come in, can he garner that same amount of respect and trust? Because I think trust is key when you have so key. It goes both ways. So yeah. Is, is, is he a leader of men? Right. I mean, that's what you need to be to be a defensive coordinator or a head coach in this league. And what I've seen from him so far, like I'm shocked that Carolina didn't keep him on. Like I was like, oh, what? Oh, he's not with the Niners. Yeah. Good move, Carolina. Well done. Thank you so much. And we'll take McCaffrey last year. Thank you so much. And everything coming out of these early camps and these early practices is that Sam Darnold has the, the greatest arm in the, in the entire league. So who knows what's going to happen there at quarterback Two huge question marks. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys are just stealing everything from the Panthers. You just, just take let's go. Everything. Yeah, take all your best stuff. Get it handed over here. Um, you know, even Christian McCaffrey saying like going to the Four ers was the best thing that ever happened to him. You know, so of course it was. <laughs> right. So you know, he came out and said that like that just just lets you you know know that yeah, like he's happy. He's you know yeah. where he's at. And, um, that know, could just be a culture thing too, right? I mean, you go to a yeah. franchise that's won a bunch of Super Bowls and dip, they expect to win. The 49ers expect to be in the playoffs, so they expect to, to make it deep into the playoffs, too. That's just a culture that's been there for a very long time. It's not something I'm sure that they have in Carolina. Like, yeah, I'm sure they want to win. Every team wants to win. You know, but when you come there and you go to, like, the 49er Hall of Fame and you see the, all the Super Bowl trophies and, you know, and you see this and that, and it's like, plus he went to Stanford. Like, this, this is he's essentially a local kid at this point. To be able to come back to that after so many losing seasons in Carolina and then, you know, step right in where you're, you know... The, the problem, too, when he was in Carolina is, like, he was one of the only guys, right? Like, he got yeah. all the focus. And I was yeah. like, you got Debo right. and Kittle and Ayuk and even Elijah Mitchell. Like, guys to take the burden off of just McCaffrey. So, of course, this is the best thing that could have happened to him. Yeah. I mean, and then, you, and then of course, you know, it's like the – because Carolina, I mean, just the whole – the whole not quarterback nonsense, you know, too. Like, it's like – it's incons- you know, like being a running back, I know you you want to have like, you know, a quarterback that you can trust and somebody some consistency, yeah, you know, yeah, like where it's not just hand it off, hand it off to him, hand it off to him, hand it off to him, throw it right. Off. Like, can we please use some? You know, can you contribute here? <laughs> And, you know, there's a little bit of that going on right now in San Francisco, too, right? I mean, just with so many question marks surrounding the Brock Purdy recovery time frame and Trey Lance, is he going to step up and be it? And now, you you know, you throw Sam Darnold into the mix and you start getting some reporters, you know, Matt, or, uh, yeah, Matt Mayoko out here. He, he dropped a line saying that, you know, he might be the best thrower that he's ever seen in a 49ers uniform. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't say quarterback. And he said maybe. Like, he, he put these, you know, things in there to be like, look, don't don't get too mad at me. You know, I, I said maybe and I said thrower, not quarterback. But the guy has a tremendous arm. And, and so when you when you have something like that and you put him into a Kyle Shanahan offense, who's really been able to get the most out of everyone that's taken a snap under center for the 49ers, you, you can definitely understand why some people will get excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you know, what happens with the quarterback competition there with Trey Lance and Sam Darnold and Brock Purdy. So hopefully those guys, you know, um, you know, get healthy and everything. So, it's, so mm-hmm. we're still on the on the train that Trey Lance is getting traded so far, right? We're, we're Not me. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think the 49ers are going to do that because they needed every quarterback they could have last year, right? And and they don't know for sure if Brock Purdy's elbow is going to be ready in time, you know, for for Week One. And so, you know, and is Sam Darnold going to be able to pick up the offense? Who knows? This is a tricky offense. This is an offense that Brock Purdy mastered, but that's because he put in the time, right? He's one of those guys that. He was there early, left late. You know, he he even though he was third string and, and had, you know, next to no chance of actually getting it started, it fell his way and he was ready and he jumped right in. So is Trey Lance put in the time right now? You know, can he stay healthy too? So if Brock Purdy can't go at the beginning of the season, then you got a guy like Trey Lance who probably can't stay healthy, who, who's never shown that he can. You need a third quarterback. You probably even need a fourth quarterback. They better have a good Fourth quarterback on the hey, practice Christian squad McCaffrey. to start the season. Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they had him last year in the right. in the pl- playoffs, and they didn't go to him. So that that's kind of how they felt about that, right? Yeah. So it, that'll be interesting. Um, but 
definitely going to see how that shapes out. Because, you know, the NFC, I mean, you know, everybody knows the NFC is really just top heavy. I mean, it's the Eagles, the 49ers, Cowboys. And everybody else. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and everybody else. So, you know, those three teams and it's everybody else. So, it's like, at the end of the day, it's, I think it's really going to all come down to those three teams and what they can do mm-hmm. in the playoffs. So, whereas the AFC, it's kind of like more spread out. It's like a yeah. lot of teams are good. Uh, so, speaking of the AFC, uh, one of those teams being the Las Vegas Raiders, Devontae Adams. He came out and said, I don't know if you heard about this, Nick. He came out and said that basically he said Aaron Rodgers didn't make me who I am. I'm not. Yeah. You know, I, you gotta like that, right? He he yeah. said that this one meant the most to him, right? Like being an all pro, you know, out from under that. Because yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of people put that together as like, oh, is is he going I was concerned when he went to the Raiders, like, oh, was it an Aaron Rodgers thing? Or is he a really good wide receiver? Well, he showed us that he's a great wide receiver. And now he's got Jimmy Garoppolo thrown to him. So hey, why not another all pro for Devontae Adams? Yeah, I thought that was interesting, you know, um, and it, it, he needed to say that because it's like, you know, everybody, he, he's like, I need people to stop thinking um, that Aaron Rodgers made me the player I am. Yeah. He didn't. Yeah, he's he, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. We know that. But he's, I'm not, let's not forget, I'm, you know, I, I came here and pulled up all pro numbers. He probably, yeah, yeah there should be. There's to be some talk about, like, maybe Devontae Adams made Aaron Rodgers what he was, you know, the last five, six years, right? I mean, let's let's start having that conversation. Right, right, right. So, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, man, I think, um, you know. It's going to be interesting. Well, you talked about how wide open the AFC is. I mean, that's not really wide open, but there's just a lot more in the AFC. You got the Bills, you got the Bengals, you got the Ravens. They could be back. We know the, the Chiefs. And now you throw the Jets into the mix, too, and the Dolphins. And like it, it keeps going. There's a lot of teams that I would not be surprised if they came out of the AFC, right? Yeah, so, yeah I mean, the, the AFC is pretty wide open to me. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, you got uh, the Chiefs, of course, at the top. And we'll get to them in a second. But, you know, I mean, the Bengals, the Bills, uh, the Ravens, the Raiders, I guess, Let's not let's not forget about Sean Payton going to Denver. Is he going to be able to yes. get the most out of Russell Wilson? Like that's another team that could be in the mix very easily. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so now, do you think? Let me get your opinion on this. Do you think that I mean, can can Russell Wilson get back to Russell Wilson with Sean Payton? Can he do it? Yeah. Yeah, I really think he can. I, I really, I didn't, when I watched him play last year, I don't think it was a, a diminishment of skills, right? I just think that they, they he wasn't on the same page as Hackett. Like they, they were not doing the same stuff. They, they did not have the right plan. He didn't have the time either. His offensive line was not great. They went out, they spent a bunch of money on Mike McGlinchey, you know, to, to kind of be that pass protector for Russell Wilson. So is that going to be a big change? It could be. They, they still have a great wide receiving core over there. And, and, you know, I, I like their running backs as well. So there, there's a lot that can be that can become of this Denver Bronco team under Sean Payton. It does. He does. He still have it. He's been out of the game for a while. Does he understand what this league is about now? Or is he going to come in with some old style stuff that doesn't work anymore? Like that's going to be interesting to see as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. You know, um, the Broncos, because they have a good defense. So, yeah, you know, defense is solid was like issue for them. Last no, year. no, just, no. Offense was a, a train wreck um, <laughs> under Hackett. So I just – To say the least. To say the <laughs> least. It was just a mess. And so now he's going to the Jets, and, you know, I hope he doesn't screw Aaron Rodgers up. Um, but, I mean, they did to get – when Aaron Green Bay – They have history. Over, so, yeah. yeah. So maybe that's that, – That was – I could see that move coming a mile away. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, I mean, even the Chargers, they – I mean, they have yeah. a meltdown, but they're still a good team. So That's kind of what the Chargers do, though, right? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I like watching the Chargers play. I like Herbert. He's a great quarterback, but it was a Staley thing, right? Was it was it he just couldn't get the job done? Like, I don't know. We're going to we're going to find out if the Chargers are can take that next step because they keep getting close. They play well. They play well. They've got this great offense, good defense. And it's like they just can't get it done. I don't know if they ever will. You got to prove it before we start picking you as a possible contender. Got to get it done. They were up, yeah. 20, what, twenty-seven to nothing against the Jags. I mean, so I, bad. I mean, oh, trust bad. me. You know, you 
well, you and I both know about blow, blowing leads in big games. We do. We do. It <laughs> so, hurts. So, it, you, you, you know, you, you can't do that. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, expect to be named a, a contender or, you know, a Super Bowl candidate because yeah. you have to win. I wouldn't put the Chargers in that right now. I, I wouldn't. No, no. I don't think you can. I think you, you keep them with, like, the Steelers and the Browns and, like, yeah, if everything goes right for them, you know, they could pop up. But I don't expect them to, to be near the top coming into the season. Yeah, and part of it was coaching decisions. Brandon Stable. I mean, so hundred percent. Is this year like really important? This has got to be the make job. or break, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, and hopefully for his sake, it's it's make. You know, but but the odds are saying that it's going to be break. You know, based on past history. Oh man, uh, I, I just hope yeah that for his sake, yeah that he can. They, they can, you know, get get over that hump and at least win a playoff game, um, you know. Yeah, make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about that first, making the playoffs, you know, mm-hmm. because the Raiders, you know, even though they – the AFC West, I mean, it's – you know, you got the Chiefs, of course, but you got the Raiders who can make a strong push. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, the Broncos – We'll see. Same thing. You know, um, Chargers will see. Like, that's three we'll see. We'll see teams that could easily all play extremely well, right? They might – that division and that conference, you know, those those four teams there in the West could easily beat up on each other, right? They play each other two, two times a year. And if they're all good football teams, that's going to hurt them all, I think, going forward. Yeah, I think so, too. So, you know, moving on to the Chiefs, um, mm-hmm. they, 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 they've been sitting at the pinnacle of the point, you know, for a long time now. Uh, been the how I many like what I mean straight AFC Championship games a lot, right? <laughs> um, and it's 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 we're gonna get to a point where somebody will finally take them down, like the Bengals did, you know, your uh, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely possible, right? I mean, Travis Kelsey is gonna be a year older. Uh, I'm not sure they ever really found that number one wide receiver that they were looking for last year, but Patrick Mahomes just seems to get it done, right? I mean, if I'm a betting man and you told me who's gonna make the the Super Bowl from the AFC, the Chiefs or the field. I'm clearly going to take the field. Like, I don't think they're that much better than everybody else. Uh, because you mentioned the Bengals. The Bills, I think, are poised to take that next step as well. They're, they're very close. I mean, if, if Tua can stay healthy, is Miami that that team that really makes a run? You know, and then, you, you know, we, we can't leave out the Jets. You know, they got Aaron Rodgers now. And so we just, we can't. We can't not mention the Jets in a talk like this because what wins championships? I mean, essentially, if you look at the numbers, it's a great quarterback. Great quarterbacks go out and win Super Bowls, or at least lead teams to Super Bowls. And and so do good defenses. And the Jets, for the first three quarters of the season last year, had one of the best defenses in, in all of football. So you got Robert Sala leading that team, and, and he, you know he's going to retool on that defense and really just focus on that because that's his bread and butter. Just kind of leave everything else up to Hackett and, and uh, Rodgers on the offensive side. So I, I, I wouldn't bet against the Jets making the playoffs for sure. Yeah, I mean they've got some exciting players too. Brees Hall. Yeah. Um, you know, Garrett. Come Wilson. back healthy, strong. Yeah. I mean, the Jets could be very exciting. And they apparently, yeah. according to Sauce Gardner, they were close to getting Odell. <laughs> um, so I mean, even Sauce even said they they even you already had a number he was going to wear. He's going to wear number seven. So. But you mentioned Odell. I mean, that immediately puts the Ravens into a new level, doesn't it? I mean. When it, when has Lamar Jackson had a guy like that, you know, that, that really can spread the field, make the tough catches over the middle, just do everything that's expected of a number one wide receiver. Like, I don't think he's ever had a guy like that. Like, maybe early on, but it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's like, you know, and he finally, he got his deal. Um, so, because we were talking about that, I mean, the whole Lamar Jackson contract, yeah. stuff, it was going on a while, and I was like, okay, when is this going to be over? Um, <laughs> and he gets his deal. Jalen Hurst gets his deal. Lamar gets his deal. So now Lamar's back to Baltimore. You know, it's like, okay, if he can stay healthy, can the Ravens make a legitimate push? Yeah. I think they can. Yeah. They can. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he is an amazing quarterback. He's a former NFL MVP. He was having a great year last year before he got hurt. Like, Lamar is a great quarterback. And if he can stay healthy, they can keep that run game going. And then you open things up with Andrews and. And OBJ, like, yeah, that, that defense is going to show up. You know it is because it's Baltimore, and that's what they do, and that's what they're known for. But if the offense can can click game in and game out, yeah, watch out for Baltimore as well. I mean, there's 10 teams right now in the AFC that I could legitimately see winning it. Like, it's crazy. 
I think so too. I mean, and they got Zay Flowers, the uh, who, guy I was really impressed from the draft. Yeah. He's a no. speedy guy who can break open the field. Like, 100%. And, you know, we've gone through all these teams and talking about all these great AFC teams, and we haven't even mentioned Jacksonville. You know, a team that made the postseason that, that could easily take that next step, too. Like, it's it's uh, this this is going to be an interesting year for the AFC. Like, good luck if you're in the AFC. If you're in the NFC, you're licking your chops because you're like, all right, we got a, we got a legitimate shot at this. There's a lot of open spots here in the NFC that can be gobbled up. But if you're in the AFC, you're already counting. You're like, dang, okay. So you got Chiefs, Bengals, Bills, oh, Dolphins, oh, Jets, like Ravens. You're like, oh no, where do we fit in there? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know the Jags, man. I mean, they came back from that that big deficit against the Chargers. Yeah, so you know they're a team that already has that kind of that poise and that metal. Like they're gonna they're gonna fight, you know. And Doug, mm-hmm. Pierce, he's a great coach, the quarterback guru. So yeah, Tre- no, but seriously, Trevor Lawrence improved under him. You know, so, so much, so much. Gonna keep him better. <laughs> I agree. So yeah, watch out for Trevor Lawrence this year. He's gonna he's gonna put up some massive numbers. I think so too. I mean, even you know, so I the only thing that concerns me that gets the Bills. Like you know, they made it. They the Bengals, but they absolutely just stumped them at home last year. Mm-hmm. So did the Bills have a Josh Allen problem? I don't think so. I don't think it's Josh Allen that's the problem here. I, I think that. You know, got quarterbacks make mistakes. And that defense folded so many times last year. They would give up 35, 40 points. And it's like, yeah, Josh Allen's going to put up those kind of numbers every once in a while. But when you make him do it every single week, plus he, he had that elbow injury, right? That, you know, he, he sustained early on in the season, like week four, week five, and he just played through it the rest of the year. Like, yeah, you could see that, that he wasn't at 100%, but. You give me Josh Allen right now on my football team, I'm I'm take that a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah, me too. I mean, he who wouldn't? He's a freak of nature. He's so good. He, he can run. He can throw. He can mm-hmm. do everything. He he's a just a he's an athletic freak. I mean, he's what you want. He's the guy that you know they're comparing uh, Anthony Richardson to. <laughs> um, so you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, so, I mean, sure. Now, did you like the Colts uh, getting Richardson there early? Loved it. Loved it. I I just thought whoever was going to get this kid is going to have a legitimate shot. Maybe not this year. Like, I hope they don't throw him out there too soon and really just destroy him, right, and really just wreck his confidence. You know, you just you, – you look at what happens with guys like that, and you always go back to, to Jamarcus Russell, right, a, yeah. a big, tall, athletic stud, you know, who just came out there too soon and really just got – destroyed and you were you were worried about something like that with like Sam Darnold too when he was out there seeing ghosts with the Jets early on in his career and, and you worry about that sort of thing because some quarterbacks that just just Ryan Leaf it happened to as well like these guys that are just these like amazing prospects with all this talent in the world and they go to the wrong spot and they get their butts kicked and it's like oh you just that, that he's destroyed like he's never going to be the same so you hope that the, the Colts are smart with it you know, and, and and don't rush Richardson out there because I, I think he's got all the tools in the world to be amazing, and I, I hope they utilize him properly. Yeah, I mean, the word out of the Colts camp is that he's been looking really good, in, you know, in mini camp, and they like him. No surprise more. there. They, he's, they, it's good buzz around. Yeah, him. and you got Jonathan Taylor, so that should be the vocal point, focal point of your offense, right, and not rely on this young kid if they do start him week one to, to you know be able to have to do everything out there right so you build a you run first to set up the pass kind of like what the ravens do yeah so I, I you know um yeah run first set up the pass what my falcons do so that's why i hope they do a uh, desmond ritter hopefully mm-hmm, i still mm-hmm. want to see him improve as well so we'll see what happens in the in, in that side of the NFC South. the south's wide open to be one too the nfc south i mean we have we didn't even mention anyone from the nfc south and there's you know, at least one team is going to make the playoffs from that. So, Wait, yeah, yeah, the, 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 it could be, it could be very easily. I mean, I, I think the Falcons have a very legitimate shot to take that next step this year. Yeah, yeah, I think the key for them is you know, they got the great defensive additions in the all season, dra- drafted um, really well. Um, you know, they, I mean, they made some good moves. So I yeah, hope it all comes to fruition. Uh, Desmond Ritter, you hope he takes that next step. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and. We'll see what happens. I mean, Bijan Robinson, he's a really talented. Um, he looks like it. He looks like the next big thing, doesn't he? Stud, yeah. So yeah, uh, you know, Arthur Smith loves his. He loves his running back. So he does. You know. He does. <laughs> um, he's got. He's got a stable of them right now. Young studs. 
yeah, Alzir, Bijan. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's crazy. Still got Harrison, you know, who I think they need yeah. to out wide. So you really, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you know, if you're the Falcons there, I mean, the Saints, yeah. Derek Carr. We'll see what they do there. Um, Panthers. Who knows? I mean, we don't know. Right? Bucks. Know. Who knows? Yeah. Bucks. I think that, well, okay, I'll say this. The Bucks have, I think that they have the least chance of making it out of the South, mm. in my opinion. Uh, I just don't think they, I think they're, as far as compared to their most situations, theirs is just a little bit more not there yet, not 100%. Sure. So, uh, but like you said, other than that, it's wide open. So we'll see. Yeah, looking forward to it. And if they keep all of this, we can sit here all day, talk about talent, talk about schemes, talk about arm strength, talk about this, talk about that. It all comes down to injuries. Who can stay healthy, right? Who, who can get their guys out there week in and week out and, and perform? Because, you know, the best ability is availability. availability. That's right. You got you to gotta have, you got to be available. You got to be healthy. That's mm-hmm. it, you know, and so and we'll see what happens there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Nick, uh, it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, you know, I think it's going to be a great season. I uh, like this rookie class. I'm interested to see these guys come out and do what they do. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens, my friend, and we'll see. A little over three months. months. Here we go. Yes, uh, we'll see who started for the Four Niners in Week One. Um, I'm interested. Come on, Brock know. Purdy, heal up. Let's go. <laughs> but if it's Trey Lance, hey, Forty Nine fans, get behind Trey Lance. I'm tired of this division of people being like, no, I only want Purdy. I only want Lance. It's like, who cares? You know, whoever's starting under the center, that's the the quarterback that you need to be rooting for because that's your team. Let's go. Unless you're related to him, then come on. Right, yes. Be thankful you have a quarterback to put under exactly. center. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, Nick, thank you for coming on, man. And, um, you know, uh, is there anything else, man, you, before we head off here, you, just any last-minute uh, thoughts? Yeah, I can't wait for camp. I can't wait to see, you know, video of these guys out there, even if it's just, you know, shells and shorts. Like, I, I just want I just want to see, you know, some more football. I, I'm, I'm aching for it. Me too. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. As always, man, we'll be talking to you very soon, Nick. Thank you, man. We'll see you, Jake. See you.